My hands were wet and cold, and I could feel the perspiration running down my back. My head was light, and I, I seemed to be walking on air. The voices of the reporters were distant and indistinct. I felt the sudden need to lie down, to rest, sleep. And the door to Gary's dressing room opened, and I saw the doctor standing there. His face and his voice were blurred. Doctor, will you come, please? What is it? He uh, complaining of a pain in his back. He did almost immediately. We started the transfusion. He's, he's asking for you. Of course. I don't understand it. I don't understand. We all did our best. So much hemorrhage, shock, cardiac strain. It's always a gamble, you see, when the operation is left so late. Sometimes there is a particular idiosyncrasy. I should have preferred a direct test, but that's no good if the patient dies while you wait to make sure. Mr. Drury. Oh, Mr. Drury. What is it? Where's Bran? Oh, he's fine. No, no, he's under study. He'll be here in a minute, Mr. Drury. They're waiting. Bran. That's Bran. The curtain must go up. Oh, I don't understand it. Yes, yes, he's dead. Why did he die, Doctor? Blood transfusion, but I don't understand it. Mr. Scales is a type 4 universal donor. Still, there are sometimes personal idiosyncrasies. Yes, I... I caught Walter's gaze and followed it. He was staring fascinated at the plate, which still stood on the table. The rose. That one there that smudged from the firing. I remember noticing. It was originally on my right... Now it's on my left. Ridiculous. You did it. You turned the plate around because you knew that my blood would save him and that yours wouldn't. Oh, I don't be a fool, Walter. I lost everything by his death. Why, why should I want him dead? You hated him. I've known I've seen it all the time. Because of the plate. Walter. You killed him. Don't be a fool. Too fantastic. What coroner? Coroner's Jew. No. No. What coroner? Oh. 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 But it happened. There. The roaring in my ears, the spastic constriction of my stomach. <sighs> the room began to teeter and twirl. I staggered to a chair. Yeah, I, I can hear the doctor faintly as though from a long, long you, way off. What's the matter? Uh, in, what is it? Easy now. It's shock. No, no, you know, here. Here, my... My side, where... Where the car hit me. Well, show me. Just... Here. Good Lord, man. Why didn't you tell us? You're hurt. Walter, yes, sir. tell them to bring in the stretcher from the ambulance. Quickly, man. Yes, sir. It's ironic. <laughs> uh, when the car hit me, it, it, it was an injury to the spleen. <laughs> the spleen, think of it. <laughs> so you see, all the time I was giving Gary blood for a transfusion. I was bleeding to death inside myself. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? Death from shock and loss of blood. They, they gave me a transfusion, too. Too late. But I wouldn't have to die, they said. I, I would have lived if, if I hadn't given my blood to kill me. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Joseph Cotton. Tonight's suspense play was produced and edited by William Spear and directed by Norman MacDonald. Music for suspense is composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Blood Sacrifice was adapted for radio by Malcolm Meacham from the short story by Dorothy Sayers. Joseph Cotton may currently be seen in the Carol Reed production, The Third Man, a David O. Selznick release. <laughs>